Hey everybody, Queen Katie here. It is January 26, 2018, and today I'm going to be speaking more about my childhood in the hospital. And I want to start off saying that something that I didn't mention on the last one is that all throughout my childhood, I get these cards occasionally from the school that I was attending at that time. And on the cards, it would have like the signatures of everybody in my class and they were all like get well messages and stuff like that and that was really sweet I remember those to this day and it really lifted my spirits whenever I would get those because some of those times I was like really really sick and it's always nice to know that like other people like were wanting me to get better you know and I know that some of you that signed them are watching so, if you are watching, like, thank you for those cards. If you may not even remember doing those, but I do, and they really meant a lot, so thank you. And, uh, so this next chapter that I wanted to get into was when I got my trach. I had to spend three months in a rehab hospital so my family and myself can learn how to use it and what it does and all that stuff. And it wasn't at my normal hospital, like I normally go to a Herman Surgeon Hospital, but this time I went to another one called Beacon at the time, and now it's called Huthbridge, and that was a really great hospital. And it really didn't feel like a hospital because it looked like a house, really. Like, it had a porch, it had a hoop, it had a dining room, it had a ballroom, and... It was really cool, and the hospital rooms didn't look like hospital rooms, they looked like, they kind of looked like my bedroom. And it had, like, cabinets and stuff, and it was really cool. So I got to know, like, everybody on my wing there, because I was there for like three whole months. So the nurses there became my family too. And what was a good thing about it too was that the kids in my wing, they were close to my age, pretty much. So I always had people to talk to, so that was really cool. So I got that kid-to-kid -kid interaction. And they were there for a long time, too. They've been there since I got there and before then. And that was really cool. I got really close with them while I was there. And I remember when specifically he was my neighbor in the hospital, and I could talk to him, but he couldn't really talk to me because he was only one years old. His name was Christopher, and he was so cute because he had a baby trach. He had a trach, and he was just a little baby, and he couldn't speak, and the way that he would talk would be he would make these like funny little sounds. He would go like, like, that's how you would talk, like, and he also had a gastric tube in his stomach as well, like me, to eat, but what's funny is that what he would do is he would pull his out, and he'd suck the milk out of the formula out of the uh, button directly, <laughs> and it was so funny because the nurses, they said that they would come in, and he'd have, like, a milk mustache all over his mouth, and that's like, evidence! That's evidence! <laughs> yeah, but he was so cute. I remember I gave him my favorite blanket because it was Christmas and his family didn't come to see him. So that was pretty sad. But he really loved the blanket. And, uh, yeah, and like, I had a lot of fun times there. Like, I remember one time I had a tea party with the, everyone there. Like the doctors and nurses, we had like a little tea party, we had hot tea and everything, that was really cool. And since I was out three months, I wasn't going to school. And I actually got a teacher to come to the actual hospital and teach us kids everything, so we got some schooling. So that way when I went back to school, I had to do a lot of makeup homework that I was prepared for it pretty much, so that was really good. And it was a stressful time for all of us because we were intimidated by the trade. Like, we had no idea what we were doing. And uh, 
Yeah, and it was just a time for all of us and like my mom, like and mom and Papa, they had to learn how to use everything and they had to do it all while me freaking out because I had no idea what it was and I wasn't used to having something in my neck permanently so I felt really weird and scary. And I think a lot of people with tricks have that initially, especially if they're kids. And, uh, yeah, and my mom wasn't working all the time, so that caused a lot of stress too because, you know, job security and everything. But my mom's boss was real understanding and real nice, so that was really good. Except she had to leave a couple of times, like, leave me at the hospital because she had to work, like, to maintain her job. And she really didn't like it, but she had to, you know, so... That was okay. And there was plenty to do there. I never ran out of stuff to do. And one thing that I wanted to discuss is... that... when you're disabled, it doesn't necessarily affect just you, it affects your entire family or even people that you're associated with to some extent because it's very stressful and it's very taxing and a lot of people can't handle it. Sometimes they just avoid it. Like I've seen parents walk out on their child because they're disabled and they can't handle the stress or all the doctor's appointments and all this stuff. So, if you're ever out somewhere and you see a disabled person with their parents actually around, that's actually, like, a big deal. Because everybody gets that. I'm fortunate and blessed to come from a family that actually is willing to participate in everything that I have to do, and does it proactively as well. And, like, my friend Christopher, my little neighbor, his family never came to see him. Except once, I remember once, and it was late at night to where, like, he was already asleep, so they couldn't wake him up and everything. So, they just came for a second, they dropped off some stuff, and then left. And I always thought that was that. And when I left, he was still there. And I haven't kept up with him in years, and one time I got a call from one of my nurse friends, uh, Herman, and he said that he was there. And she told me that he uh, passed away and he was only like five years old. And I saw a picture of him once and he still had my blanket and he still had that same smile that he always did. He was still growing his teeth so he had little gaps. Yeah, man, that was pretty sad. But, you know, when you're in the hospital, like, you see that kind of stuff pretty frequently, so... It's just the way it is, and he's in a better place, I feel like, so... That's really good, where you can run and play and all that. <laughs> yeah. But that's the thing, it's like... Not just for the same people, but everybody, like... Life is very unpredictable, and everything seems fine, but it could all go immediately with one instance, and that's why I do my best to, like, do everything I can to live the way that I do, and, you know, and I think everybody else does that too, because, you know, like, Christopher did a lot, even though he lived a very short life, he did a lot and he impacted a lot of people, especially at the hospital. And, uh, yeah, so I always remember that, and I learned a lot from him, too, even though he couldn't speak or anything. Like, he told me how to be more compassionate, you know? Because at that time, I was kind of selfish, and, uh, yeah. But probably because I got all the attention, you know, because I always had to have constant attention. 
So I developed that way. And uh, it was nice seeing another perspective, you know. Um, so that was a valuable lesson that I got from him. And, uh, but yeah, and since then, I've been in that out of the hospital. And it's all been adjustments and all that. And, but you know, another good thing is I've gotten to see a lot of amazing places and meet a lot of interesting people, which I think I'll talk about in another video. But yeah, so the main message of these two past videos has been, like, even though the hospital life isn't necessarily the traditional childhood of going out and playing and all that, there still is, like, a childhood in there somewhere that people like me experience, you know, and according to the people it's probably varying degrees, but from my experience it was actually pretty great, you know. And I still had plenty of excellent experiences outside of the hospital that I might talk about at some other time. But yeah, it's not as bad as people think, like, I wasn't a lab rat or anything like that. So, I think that's attributed to a great staff, a great work environment, a great hospital environment, and, you know, just all around great patients and all that. So, I just really appreciate all that, and I think it's a good place to close it for this video, so... Thank you for watching. This has been Queen Kennedy rolling out. See you next time.